Hi, I'm the Space Quest Historian. You may be wondering where I've been these past two and a half weeks. Why is there no Mask of Eternity video? Did the unholy abject shittiness of that game finally do me in? Have I been confined to a mental institution in restraints babbling incoherently about backflip jumping puzzles and bullshit camera controls? No, quite the contrary. I was well underway putting the video together when suddenly, BAM! Adventure Jam. Now, for those of you who don't know, Adventure Jam is an annual game jam where participants have two weeks to make an adventure game. I've taken part in this jam every Every year since its inception, and the last couple of years I've been doing it with my friend and fellow batshit insane person Torpedo Bear, whom stalwart viewers of this channel may recognize from our golfing expeditions. I, 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 I fucking hate this game. <laughs> anyway, we've made some weird shit in the past, but this year's game takes the cake. This is an actively hostile game that hates the player and wants to see them dead, or at least in vast amounts of suffering. Inspired in no small degree by, yes you guessed it, my experiences playing the King's Quest games. In fact, with this game, I personally set out to intentionally make every mistake that game design law tells us not to make, and subject the player to the most abjectly awful puzzles and game mechanics I could possibly think of. Take this UI for starters. It's massive. It's got way too many verbs, and most of them do a fat load of squats. They're just there to confuse and annoy the player. The inventory system is deliberately cumbersome. You can only scroll through your inventory items one at a time, and you need to equip them like this is some fucking dungeon crawler from the mid-90s before you can do anything with them. Also, we disabled the save game feature. Yes, you can't save your game at all in this game. Instead, we put in a password system, inspired by the rat bastard atrocity that was King's Quest V on the NES. You get a new password when you solve one of the major puzzles, but other than that, if you die, you just have to start over. Speaking of dying, say hello to Gary. Gary is our random encounter monster. He pops up every once in a while to eat your face off. You can run away, sure, but if you hit a dead end, you're toast. Back to square one. Oh, you may be wondering what this place is. Yes, it's a labyrinth. Of course there's a labyrinth in this game. Most of your time playing this game will be spent burning shoe leather in these identical looking corridors, and they are identical because in the game code this is just the same room with one or more of the four exits blocked off depending on where in the maze you are. This is an old trick invented by Al Lowe back when he designed Leisure Suit Larry 3, and it was subsequently used to piss me off to great effect in, yes you guessed it again, King's Quest 5 and 6. How did you get into this labyrinth, you may ask? Well, through this locked door. This is the starting room of the game. The key is in the keyhole on the other side of the door. You have a thin poking apparatus, in this case a sewing needle, and a sheet of toilet paper. Now, if you've played adventure games before, particularly poorly designed ones like Phantasmagoria, you'll know where this is headed. This is the puzzle that made Richard Cobbett lose his shit back when he did a video review of Mystery of the Druids. Dear adventure game developers everywhere, stop doing this puzzle, stop doing this puzzle, stop doing this puzzle, stop doing this puzzle! Speaking of Richard, he's in this game. He's the voice of Ewan, who is a recurring character in the games that Torpedo Bear and I have made. So essentially, in what can only be described as a slice of very delicious cake made entirely of irony, we made Richard make you, the player, do the puzzle that he hates the most. You know what puzzle I hate the most is? Sliding tile puzzles. Anyway, Dave Gilbert's in this game too. He's the guy who made Unavowed and the Blackwell games. A long time ago I asked him if he would provide the voice with this one-off joke in a video where he would play a rubber duck that was possessed by Satan, and after that he said, if you ever want me to play Satan again, just let me know. And since then I've made a point of writing Satan into everything I do, so this is, I believe, the fourth time he's playing Satan. Anyway, the guy here we photographed to actually be Satan is not Dave. He's actually the head of IT at my day job. So that's a shitty UI, a shitty maze, a shitty key puzzle to get into the maze, and a shitty random encounter monster to shit up your day once you get into the shitting maze. What am I missing? Oh, how about random object placements? Yeah, you're supposed to fix this big machine by shoving two components in it. Those components are somewhere in the maze, but their location is randomized. So you have to go through the whole maze looking for them every time you play. Same goes with this dead mailman who has another item you need. That item you need in this room where this tram will happily leave without you if you don't make it across these narrow walkways to the other side of it before the timer runs out. And if you're not close enough, well then tough shit, Rosella. Okay, what else we got? Oh yeah, uh, sliding tiles. So anyway, 
That's it. Uh, that's what I've been doing these past couple of weeks. It was quite the undertaking, actually, since I didn't use any of AGS's existing templates. I actually coded the whole UI and maze and all that stuff from scratch. But I won't bore you with that now. I'll make another video soon about how this whole thing is held together for those of you who are interested in that sort of thing. Right now, I'd just like to issue this game as a challenge. Over the next three weeks, if you do your own stream or playthrough of this game, then send me a link to that stream or playthrough. And then three weeks from now, I'll put together a compilation of the best reactions, and I'll tell you all about the secret ins and outs of the game, including all the cheat codes that could have made your life so much easier. So send me a link to your video or stream on Twitter at SQHistorian, or just leave one in the comments on this video. I'll be sure to watch them all, so don't hold back. And on behalf of myself and my co-conspirator Torpedo Bear, thank you so much for watching. Best of luck playing this horrible piece of shit, because you're gonna fucking need it. Until next time, I'll see you around the Chrono Stream. Bye!